So what coefficient do I put in front of this species? A three. Okay. So three calciums, and that's going to change the number of calciums and sulfurs and oxygens. All right. We're going to recount. One calcium in the formula times the three is three. One sulfur in the formula times the three is three sulfurs. Four oxygens in the formula times the three is 12 oxygens. And lo and behold, it's balanced. All right. Now, that could have been done a little later if we wanted to, but I always like to balance equations first. You don't have to. You can wait till you need it. And you need it when you get to the point where you have to change from one species to another in the stoichiometry. All right, now to do the stoichiometry, we've got to look back at the problem and find the amounts of our reactants. The amounts of reactants are 2 grams of calcium chloride and 1 gram of aluminum sulfate. So 2 grams of calcium chloride. We're going to always put our starting amounts over one. And then we have one gram of aluminum oxide. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong problem. Aluminum, aluminum sulfate. Both of us go over one because we always put our starting amounts over one. So the first step we've got to go through is converting mass to moles. What do we have to have to convert from mass to moles? You have to have an equality statement, and this is a particular kind of equality statement. What kind is it? It has a special name. This, this particular calculation huh well it's a definition you need to know we have to calculate something to find the equality statement we need we're going to need the I heard it molar mass there you go we need the molar mass of calcium chloride so let's list uh, calcium and chlorine this is the format that I want you to use in my class because it helps you to keep all the little details right. Neatness does count. You can tell what's going on. Plus, when you keep it neat and organized in a way that I can make sense out of it, then I can give you uh, credit. Uh, oh, I need two of these, though. Yes, what do you need one out for? You're not taking notes in pen, are you? You're supposed to be taking notes in here in pencil for just that purpose. Okay. So the number you get is this. But if that's all you give me, you're going to lose points because I'm going to count up for the fact that you didn't give me an equality statement because that's what you need, an equality statement to write in a conversion unit. So 110.984 grams of calcium chloride is going to be equal to one mole of calcium chloride. And in an earlier question, I was asked, what are the three things that a mole is equal to? And it is one of those things is the sum of the atomic masses of all the atoms 
in a formula of whatever the thing is you're starting with. That's what a molar mass is. That's what this is right here. Okay? So now that I have this, I can take and put the number that has matching units and species with what's right here. So if I have units of grams and, calcium and species of calcium chloride on the top here, I want grams and calcium chloride on the bottom here. And this side of the equality statement has that matching set of units and species. So we have 110.984 grams of calcium chloride. And the other side is one mole of calcium chloride. And now we can go to the molar ratio. All right, this will get us from the starting unit of measurement to the moles that we need. You convert from one unit of measurement to another using a conversion unit. And this particular conversion unit comes from a molar mass calculation. All conversion units come from an equality statement. We've got this equality statement from molar mass calculations. Now, the molar ratio is how we go from one species to another. A molar ratio is how we go from one species to another. And a molar ratio comes from the balanced chemical equation. We want the same units and species in the bottom here. And so we can consider this 3 here to be moles. We talked about that in the very beginning of this unit. These coefficients here can be used to mean the number of moles as well as the number of individual particles. Why do you keep going? Yeah, like, why why because that's what it takes to get there. You can't you can't go directly from the mass of calcium chloride to the mass of calcium sulfate. You've got to go through Moleville. And we're about to go through Moleville here. Okay? Alright, so we want three moles of calcium chloride. And we want three moles of calcium sulfate. Okay? There's Mobile. There's downtown Mobile right there. Huh? Right there and right there. Okay? Now we can cancel units and species. And now we want to get from the moles of calcium sulfate to the mass of calcium sulfate. For that, we're going to need another molar mass calculation. Okay, so we need calcium, sulfur, and oxygen. Calcium's atomic mass is 40.078. Sulfur's atomic mass is 32.065. And oxygen's atomic mass is 15.9994. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to uh, multiply by the number of atoms we have in the formula. The formula does not include the coefficient in the balanced equation. It only includes the numbers that are indicated by subscripts. So we're going to have one calcium, we're going to have one sulfur, but we're going to have four oxygens. And we'll be very careful to line up all of our units, our, I'm sorry, digits here, because we want to make sure that we know what the insignificant digits are for addition. Careful to line up all your digits, you'll see you have an empty slot here and here above that six. We add up all the numbers we have. We've got 
four zero six. That last digit is insignificant because those, there are those empty slots up there. So we're ready to round this number off now to one thirty six point one four. This six we're going to round off rounds this zero up to a one, and that's grams of calcium sulfate equals one mole of calcium sulfate. Okay, so we have an equality statement. An equality statement is needed to write a conversion unit. We're going to have one mole of calcium sulfate on the bottom. This many grams on the top. Cancel units of moles and unit and species of calcium sulfate. Now we're ready to do the math. <clears throat> Is that helping you solve this problem? Oh, no. Yeah. Let's try not to do that because it ain't helping you much. Got a test tomorrow. Need to focus. And this is grams of calcium sulfate. We need to underline the insignificant digits. Now the rules for significant digits. When you have a multiplication division problem like this, are different than the ones for addition as we had down here at the bottom. For this, we want the num the measure to calculate. We want to, we want to find the numbers that are measured or calculated numbers, and then find the one that has the least number of digits in the problem, and then we make our final answer have that same number of digits. So this number right here is measured. It has three significant digits. This one's calculated. It has six. This one's calculated and has six. So all those three numbers, measured and the two calculated numbers, this uh, measured number in the beginning has the least number of digits. It has three, so we want our final answer to have three. So we count one, two, three over here. And we'll find that we have an answer then that should be 2.45 grams of calcium sulfate. Okay, That's the first of the two stoichiometry problems you have to do. The next one is to do the same calculation with the starting amount of aluminum sulfate. I've shown you how to do it. Now you do the next one. Okay, finish this problem, the rest of this problem here.